The film starts in 2003, after the 9-11 attacks. Jack Farmer, a young 22-year-old soldier, is at a goodbye party with his family and friends. Everyone wishes him well at the dinner. His girlfriend, Peyton, is sad about his upcoming departure, but asks him to come back safely. He promises her he will return, and she says goodbye with tears in her eyes. The next day, Jack and his fellow soldiers arrive at Abu Ghraib, a prison 20 miles from Baghdad. They're eager to get there, and Captain Hayes greets them with a motivational speech about their role in the war on terror. He explains their duties. As U.S. Army reservists, they'll be stationed at the largest U.S. enemy detainee facility in the world. He tells them they'll be there for six months, until the new year. As Jack and the others get settled in their dorm, they see bloodstains on the ground, signs of frequent attacks. Soon after, Jack sees a day counter on the wall. He marks his first day getting ready for the Tauf days ahead. The following morning, the soldiers attend an orientation. The instructor tells them that most days at the facility will be quiet, but there can be chaotic times. Their main job is to fix vehicles, but he also mentions a volunteer position at the base where they need guards for thousands of detainees due to a shortage of soldiers. He says they can volunteer if they want. Later that day, Jack talks about the detainees and the lack of volunteers. His friend says the job is like babysitting adults and talks about the harsh treatment by the guards in the hardcore section. Their talk is casual, but Jack seems to be taking mental notes. That night, a bomb hits their cell while they're sleeping. Everyone rushes to get out of the building, but sadly, one of the men gets hurt. Everyone is shocked, while some try to help the injured man. They put a powdered anesthetic on his wounds, but he dies from his injuries. Jack and the others watch this from a corner. The scene then shifts to the next morning as the alarm clock wakes the soldiers. They're upset but carry on with their duties. Jack says that Captain Hayes' orientation speech was basically right. They don't have much to do all day except fix vehicles and joke around. They're overtrained soldiers on the reserve, stationed on the front lines of the war. Each day is the same as the next. Jack often looks at Peyton's picture. He's stuck in a boring routine in poor living conditions. They don't have basic things like mail and TV. Their fight is more against boredom than gathering intelligence or fighting an enemy. At night, they sit around a fire, and sometimes they entertain themselves with fights. As the days pass, on the 153rd day, Jack decides to ask Captain Hayes if there's still an opening for military police duty. He wants to do something meaningful, instead of just being bored. Captain Hayes gives him a shift, effectively giving him the job. Jack asks if he needs any training, but Captain Hayes assures him he'll manage just fine. Without any preparation or expectations, Jack is moved to hard sight a cell block said to house hardened terrorists. We're soon shown the prison where Jack will be supervising inmates. The facility is dark and eerie, with loud metal music reverberating from a cell. Jack enters and meets his new boss, Sergeant Tanner. In contrast to the scruffy sergeant, Jack looks neat and clean. Tanner tells him to take off his coat, warning that the prisoners will soon drive him insane. He shows Jack around and explains that their main rule at the hard site is no compassion. Their job is to soften up prisoners for military interrogators using methods like noise disruption, sensory deprivation, humiliation, and isolation. Sergeant Tanner tells Jack to avoid talking with the detainees unless he's giving a direct order. He also advises Jack to always be aggressive. At night, Jack shares his experiences at the prison with his fellow soldiers around a fire. His descriptions of how the detainees are treated are met with indifference. When one soldier suggests the detainees might be innocent, another, Pitts, argues that they're always found to be terrorists after interrogation. Jack isn't sure what to believe and is mainly looking for a break from the monotony. The group then changes the serious conversation to more enjoyable topics. Tunde, one of the soldiers, starts singing and the rest join in. The next day at the prison, Jack sees the torture of several prisoners who have just returned from interrogation. They're wearing goggles filled with sweat and salt, causing their eyes to burn. One of the prisoners taunts Jack, leading to an immediate reaction from Tanner. Suddenly, all the prisoners start chanting, Allahu Akbar, and Tanner orders Jack to quiet them. Jack does his best to give a direct order, but chaos ensues when Tanner starts to brutally torture them. One prisoner, Hamoud, is the only one spared from the torture as he stays silent, lying on the ground and watching the chaos. Back with his group, Jack enjoys his usual fun and spends the rest of the afternoon messing around with Tunde. The next day at the prison, while Jack is on guard duty, he notices one of the detainees isn't responding. He opens the cell to check on the man, only to find him dead. He calls for a medic, and only Tanner rushes to the scene. Jack 
immediately tries to perform CPR on the detainee, but Tanner warns him about the risk of catching a virus and argues that it's not worth trying to save a terrorist. Despite Tanner's objections, Jack continues his efforts to revive the man. All the while, Hamoud is watching Jack closely as he tends to the dead man. In the following days, Jack is left shaken and channels his energy into physical exercise. He struggles with feelings of anger and confusion that he can't express, but he still manages to show up for work every day. He's also counting down the days until he can go home, and he's currently on day 87. One day, Hamoud seizes the opportunity to speak to Jack. Initially, Jack is skeptical and reluctant to engage. He orders Hamoud to step back, but Hamoud insists on being heard. He alleges that another inmate in the cell is responsible for the death of a fellow detainee. Jack is skeptical, so he searches the accused inmate's cell for a weapon. When he doesn't find anything that could be considered a weapon, he accuses Hamoud of lying. Despite Jack's disbelief, Hamoud maintains his stance. Jack reprimands him and leaves. The next day, as Jack is patrolling the cell, a detainee throws waste at him. Jack struggles with the prisoner, but eventually retreats to clean himself up. In the meantime, the accused killer asks for a tissue. As Jack bends down to hand it over, the man suddenly lunges at him with a knife. Luckily, Jack manages to dodge in time, avoiding the blade. The detainee retreats angrily, and Jack now believes Hamoud's claim. Over the next few days, Jack is plagued by overthinking and uncertainty. During one of his shifts, Hamoud attempts to befriend him and initiates conversation. Jack shares his name, and Hamoud reveals that he lived in London, which is where he learned English and earned an engineering degree. Jack is impressed and begins to trust Hamoud. The next day, Jack brings Hamoud a packed brownie as a small treat. He mentions it might not taste different, but it could serve as a snack. Hamoud accepts and thanks him. The two begin to bond and share stories about their pasts. For the next few days, Jack and his group stick together, their spirits lifted as they look forward to going home and experiencing all the things they've missed, especially the company of women. Jack is particularly excited to see his girlfriend. Back in the prison, Jack continues his conversations with Hamoud. He shows him pictures of Peyton, his girlfriend, and shares his plans to propose to her upon his return. Hamoud wishes him the best. However, their conversation is interrupted when another sergeant arrives to take Hamoud to the interrogation room. Jack is reluctant to let him go, but has no choice. The soldiers chain Hamoud's leg and cover his face with a black sheet. Just days before their scheduled return home, Jack and his unit learn that their tour of duty has been extended by six months. They won't be seeing their families before the new year. Captain Hayes encourages them to persevere until the mission is complete, promising improvements to the facility, including more accessible showers and running water. Meanwhile, Pitts becomes increasingly angry. Shortly after, the countdown to home changes to 191 days, and we see Jack breaking down at one point. In the following days, the group remains silent, all of them disappointed and longing to go home. Pitts loses control and starts screaming, while the rest of the group watches in silence. Later that day, the group seems to have calmed down and resumed their routine. Meanwhile, Jack goes to the toilet to pee, but a bomb explodes nearby, knocking over the toilet. Jack is okay but partially unconscious. His friends rush to calm him and help him. He's okay, except for being dirty. He goes to the bathroom to take a shower. The water works this time, and Jack seems to have accepted his situation. He has made peace with it as there is no other choice. He imagines his girlfriend Peyton coming to him. He turns around and embraces her, and the two become passionately intimate. This is all in his imagination, and in reality, he breaks down missing her. The following day, during his usual shift, Jack finds Hamoud shivering in the cold. Jack asks him what happened, but Hamoud remains silent. It seems like he has gone through several torturing sessions and is now ill. Jack gives him the snack he brought anyway. Shortly after, the previous soldiers arrive to take Hamoud again. This time, Jack stands up to the sergeant and tells him he believes Hamoud is innocent. The sergeant, however, warns him to watch his mouth as he has no idea who these people are. He orders him to just follow orders and leave the interrogations to the others. Later that night, Jack goes to one of the fight nights. He signs himself up and ends up boxing with a giant muscular man. He is doing this as a distraction. His friend Tunde tells him to call off the fight, but Jack insists. He ends up beaten up that night and defeated. The next morning, he goes to his shift as if nothing happened. That day, the sergeant brings Hamoud back and opens his cell. The sergeant tells him he still hasn't confessed. Jack stands there by the bar, unable to help his friend. In the next couple of days, Jack finds Hamoud trying to kill himself by strangling his neck. Jack rushes and manages to save him on time. Hamoud breaks down in tears and Jack holds him for comfort. Soon, 
it's revealed that the previous volunteer who had been in Jack's position had resorted to shooting himself in the foot to escape. He was as devastated as Jack but had given up. The torture continues, and the sergeant keeps taking Hamud for interrogation and bringing him back. Eventually, Jack has had enough. He confronts his fellow soldiers, defending Hamud's innocence, only to learn that Hamud has confessed to building a bomb that killed 18 civilians in a coffee shop. Jack questions Hamud, asking if he killed innocent people, to which Hamud replies that they were not innocent. Jack breaks down and subsequently adopts a more aggressive posture, treating the detainees less kindly than he had prior to Hamoud's confession. He becomes just like Sergeant Tanner, who treats the detainees with disrespect, rudeness, and cruelty. One day, when it's finally time for Jack to go home, he briefs a new soldier set to replace him, much like Tanner had briefed him. His replacement takes out a camera and snaps a photo, but Jack tells him to put the camera away. When Jack notices Hamoud has fallen asleep, he drags the prisoner out of the cell and begins to abuse him, making him smell his own waste. Unknown to Jack, the second soldier snaps another picture. A few days left until home and we see Jack with the boys. Their hopes are now reviving to go home, and their spirits are up. Finally, the day of their departure arrives, and they pack their bags. Jack is so excited to find Peyton, and bids farewell to the pit they have lived in for the past month. Back home, Jack and Peyton meet, and he finally embraces her as he had always imagined. She kisses him too, and the two head into the house and upstairs. There he makes love to her as he dreamed, but he couldn't find focus and seems to be drifting away. The following day, as everybody was having breakfast, Jack sits there watching the family. Everybody seems to be functioning and having something to do, but he sits there with guilt over what happened in Iraq. Later that day, he and Peyton go shopping. As they were looking around the speakers and some DVD players, while Peyton drifts to look for laptops for sale, Jack grabs a real chocolate and has a bite. Meanwhile, the TV announces the Abu Ghraib prison scandal, where Iraq prisoners are held captive and encounter hideous torture and murder. The reporter also reveals pictures of American soldiers abusing the prisoners. Jack is also previewed on the TV torturing Hamoud. The movie comes to a close as we see Peyton arrive to hear the news, and Jack standing frozen and speechless. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.